Hi, welcome to School of Life Sciences uh, question and answer. Uh, today we have Caitlin, Hannah and Hugh. Um, I'd like you to introduce yourself and then just say uh, how you found living in Liverpool. Hi, I'm Caitlin. I'm a second year biological and medical sciences student. I really like Liverpool because it's just the right size um, and it's kind of an introduction to city living if you've not been near a city growing up. Um, and the people are really lovely and friendly and it's just close everything that you need to the university. Yeah, so I'm a third year microbiology student and the same as Caitlin, I've come from um, a little countryside village. So actually, uh, when I came into Liverpool, it was really nice because it's just big enough that you've got loads of things to do, but it still feels like a really nice community to live in. Hi, I'm Hugh, I'm a second year zoology student and um, like these two, I completely agree. It's, Liverpool's a perfect transition when you're moving from, say, a small village like me in North Wales or something. It's all um, it's nice and convenient. You can walk everywhere, but the trans public transport's great as well, and all the people are lovely. So it's a it's a great place to live and study. And how have you all found uh, kind of uh, feeling at home? Com you know, with with uh, the other residents of the city. Do you, do you feel welcome as a student? I think definitely. There's because there's a few universities. There's a huge student population overall. Um, and so there's never a struggle to find anything to do or anything that's catered towards students because there's just so many that that's what kind of everyone's used to and so everybody's really friendly. Yeah, um, I agree with Caitlin as well and I was quite lucky that I had a couple of friends that were at different universities around Liverpool so it was kind of like I was moving from home to another home and I had people around me that I knew too. Great. Yeah, I agree. The whole city is very student orientated and um, yeah, people are very friendly and welcoming and make you feel at home here. Great. Uh, so moving from the city to the university, what what do you like about the university and how have you come to uh, feel at home at the university? I think one of the main things I like about the university is the size of it. It's kind of small enough that you get a feel for who the important people are um, and it's not kind of you're a tiny fish in a huge pond you know there's you know the people that you need to know uh, but there's still enough people around that you've got that new experience of mixing in a completely different environment with people from different cultures and different countries that you would have never really had the opportunity to meet otherwise yeah i really like the university because of the size of it and the fact that it's so close to the city and there's so much opportunity as well within the university. I don't think I've had a day that I'm not busy because there's always something to do. And if there's not something throughout the university, there's something close by that you can participate in. Yeah, because the university is on a campus, there's a real good sense of community spirits. And um, that's always really nice. And it gets you involved in lots of different stuff. Um, and the School of Life Sciences itself is a great size. All the lecturers you come to know, because um, you see everyone around all the time, you can really get to know them. and integrate which is great great so moving to kind of when you first arrived like t tell me about the accommodation over the years like what did you do in first year and how has it changed over the years so in first year i was in off-campus accommodation um which was a really nice kind of you say that the university is a community but then on an even smaller scale the student village was a lovely little like bubble of especially in those first few weeks everybody was in the same setting um you're all a bit nervous but you just you'll strike up a conversation waiting for the bus then um and it's really nice that there is that kind of hub of students and you know that if you speak to somebody they'll kind of be able to connect with you about something right yeah so uh, when i was in university first year i was in vine court and i was catered so the fact that it was on campus it meant that it was really close i used to roll out of bed run in, grab some food and then get off to a lecture within the space of 20 minutes. So, but it was really good because it meant that I wasn't having to spend a lot of time travelling and that everything was all in really close vicinity to me. So all the amenities like the sports centre and all of the lecture theatres were in a 10 minute walk from where I was, which meant that it was really nice because I didn't have to stress about having to worry to navigate a new city with buses. I could just take my own time and find out where I was by walking around. Great. Yeah, so I was in the exact same position as Hannah, I was in Vine Court, catered as well, and it was perfect. Someone like me is not very good at time management and catching buses, but it's been great. Um, so I was never late to lectures, so that was perfect. And then moving on to second year, 
and now in a student house, which is um, about a 10 minute walk from campus, so that's great as well. And the landlords and everything are lovely, so it's all very convenient. So related to that, uh, what's been your experience uh, coming to Liverpool, to the university and making friends and making choices about who you're going to live with? I think it's one of those weird things where you can't really explain how it happens, but because everyone's in the same setting of most people are kind of, they've taken a gap year or they're straight out of um, sick form or something, but everyone's like, well, this is really weird and new. And so you do just kind of chat and get to know people. Um, but I found that everybody was really welcoming towards each other because we all felt the same. And so it was really easy to make friends. And then from there, you just kind of gravitate towards your people. You'll find them somehow and you'll kind of band together. Um, and then we had a conversation near the end of the first semester, um, a few of us that were getting really close and we were like, oh, actually, should, should we live together next year? And then started to look into it more from there, really. Mm. So um, by chance, and I didn't have any say in any of this, uh, one of my friends from sixth form ended up actually living upstairs in the flat above me at Vine Court. And I got really good friends with that flat because there was other people that were doing biological sciences and there were some vets in there as well. So it kind of sites is all mixed together. And by then, I think it was about a couple of weeks in, we were like, actually, this is the group we want to be in. So by the end of, again, end of first semester, we all ended up living together. So we went from a flat of 16 down to a flat of seven. And then when we went into third year, we split the flat, uh, this flat into two. So then like, now I'm in a house of four. And it's the same people that I lived in with first year. We've just split into two different houses because we've like changed friendship groups or we've added more we've added more friends into the group. So it was nice to have a small house mm. in our third year so we can kind of knuckle down and get work in. <laughs> yeah, so I agree. You can't really explain how the whole making friends thing has worked. It just happens. It's just one of those natural things. Everyone's in the same boat when we get here and everyone's um we soon get along with the people you want to get along with, it's just one of those things. Um, then I ended up living with two of the girls from my course that I met on the first day in the icebreaker session. It was quite funny, so we obviously bonded on that first day and then we're still living together this year and going to do next year as well. We're great friends, so these things just happen. <laughs> great. So obviously making friends is important for, you, for your community um, and support whilst at Liverpool. What about... Um, kind of things that you do outside your studies at Liverpool that have kind of helped you feel uh, part of the community and, and, and settled in, in Liverpool? So I joined the Life Science Network team this year and so it's not the kind of university standard um, competitively but it's just different teams that form normally of courses and stuff um, and I actually really liked that because there were a lot of people due to the size of the course that I kind of recognised their faces but didn't know um, but because of that I've got to know a lot of them a lot better and it's nice just to have that network so that your immediate friends might not do this same module as you but you know a few more people that you can kind of go to and ask if you want to have a chat about something if you don't understand it or something yeah um, and it's a really nice way to kind of expand your circle great um, so in first year, I started off just as a social player in the um, University of Liverpool Badminton uh, Society. And then in second year, I worked my way up through committee. So I was social secretary and welfare officer. And then in final year, um, I'm vice president. So I have no athletic ability <laughs> in the body, but somehow I end up on the committee. But it was really nice because it just shows you that you don't actually have to be really good at a sport. It's all about having that community and the friendship. And that it's just about having fun and being able to participate in something that you enjoy. So I just turn up on a Thursday and a Sunday, do the socials, the Christmas meals and the different balls. And it's just nice to have different people that you wouldn't necessarily mm -hmm. um, be friends with because they're off different courses in different years. But you all kind of just mingle into one group and you kind of don't realise that you're all these different people. And you're, all, but you're actually just one big like family when it comes to the athletic union, I'd say. Great. Yeah, I completely agree. There's always and there's always something that's out there for someone. I think there's every night in university I'm doing something, some different society, I do music society, maybe baking society, something like that. And it just gets you out and you see and you meet all sorts of different people with all sorts of different ideas or whatever. It's all really refreshing and you can keep whatever type of hobbies or whatever you've got going. And I also go running as like a dockside runner group down on the docks every Tuesday and that's great because that's people from all over Liverpool so you meet people from all sorts of backgrounds and different professions and students from different unis and everything so that's great. Great well obviously uh, you're here to study so uh, 
coming back to studying in the, the School of Life Sciences on your different degree programs, um, obviously there's 11 degree programs in the school and you three are kind of a representative of that group. Um, what was the transition like? What was the jump like from sixth form or college to first year in terms of study? I found that the jump to first semester was actually not that bad at all. Hmm. Um, it's a lot of effort made to kind of make things introductory. So there's a lot of new information to keep you interested, um, but they make sure everyone's at the same standard and everyone's able to spend some time just getting used to how to learn at university because it is quite different um, from sixth form and high school. But because there's that nice intro, it means when things start to step up a bit in second semester, you're ready for it. You've got kind of your friendship group, your support network ready there. Mm. Um, so it's all quite smooth. Great. So I found that the jump wasn't actually the academic side of it. It was just the change in the way that you live. So you used to your parents cooking for you and having everything hand on a plate and then going to university where you have to learn to cook yourself. You have to learn to make your bed, to clean and make sure that you're actually healthy and alive. So it wasn't the academic side that I found the hardest, but it was actually transitioning to being more independent. And like Caitlin said, it wasn't that big of a jump. I found that quite a lot of it was taught in my A-levels, whether it be uh, biology and chemistry um, mixed together, especially for some of the first semester modules, where they're just trying to get everyone just to be at the same level so that when you do get into second semester, you can all be taught at the same speed and you all know what's going on. Okay. Yeah, I completely agree with Hannah. It all depends what type of person you are. If you're already like quite an independent person, then it's not too bad. But otherwise, you'll soon learn how to become more independent. And it is really quite easy once you get going. But that first semester, that's probably the main thing you'll learn is how to become more independent in yourself. If that's through academia or just day to day life. Okay. Um, but like the academic jump, I agree. It's all the first semester, especially in life sciences, is just refreshing the stuff that we already know. So it just get you going in a way before your second semester we can go a bit more specific into what you're interested in so it's, it's not too bad at all great so just uh, just briefly because people are interested in like what kind of things you study and how you study uh, in the school of life sciences can you just very briefly uh, choose to talk about your experiences of the, the practicals um, so in the teaching labs um, and obviously the lectures and then your tutorials and, and sort of workshops and skill sessions. So I found labs in first year were really good at just giving you an overview of all of the equipment and how to use it properly uh, because there was a lot of discrepancies between the people that I spoke to about how much lab work they'd done and kind of what equipment they'd used. So the fact that there's no kind of stress about, oh, well, I've never used an automatic pipette before everyone's taught even if you already know you're still going to get taught again so that everybody uses it properly and knows kind of what's going on and so it's nice that there's no kind of stress and worries about that and then i don't know whether shall i do labs and then yeah why don't and then we can yeah do you want to hannah do you want to talk about the other yeah i can do lectures so i found that with the lectures in first semester of first year they're really broad just to get you getting to grips with how it's taught how um, they're expecting you to learn it and what you want to take from the lectures then as the year goes on in second semester um, second year then third year I feel like it kind of branches and gets more specific so first first year and second year I found for microbiology specifically that it was quite broad and you were given um, a really big overview so whether you wanted to dive out into genetics or go into immunology uh, animal disease and then in your second semester of second year in your final year you were able to really specialize in what you were found interesting so i went from going really interested in parasitology and now i've completely changed and i'm really interested in uh, biotechnology and global health so it does show that you have the ability as well to change uh, what you want to do because of so many uh, modules that are on offer great Yes, you. Did you want to talk about the tutorials and maybe mention about how you changed as well? Okay, yeah. Um, so in regards to tutorials, um, you get signed an academic advisor when you first arrive. So that's like your first point of call if you have any issues regarding um, academic stuff or just general life stuff, I suppose. They're very, that's a really good point of call to get problem solved and sort um, like essential skills work, we do that type of stuff. Um, and also like practical side, for me doing zoology, um, I have changed from bio to zoology just because I wanted more fieldwork aspect in regards to my um, practical stuff and not as such lab work. 
so that was really good. So I've been like bird watching and stuff, as opposed to being stuck in the lab, which didn't really suit me. Um, and I've just been gaining loads of like ID skills and wildlife stuff, which is stuff I'll need for my future career. So um, it all depends on what you want out of your degree program. And for me, I knew I wanted more field work, so that's why I decided to change degree program. And I was really easy to do that. I did that at the end of the first year, and there's no problem as long as you have a reasoning behind it. Um, and you know where you go in, the university is very supportive to allow you to change. Okay, great. Um, and just uh, one last thing on the studies. Um, obviously, there's the third year um, uh, honours project, which is uh, a two semester uh, experience, which is kind of like the capstone. Um, so I think Hannah's in her third year. Did you want to just briefly uh, sort of contrast that to the first and second year practicals? So um, I feel like your first and second year is setting you up for your honours project. So mine's a lab based, it doesn't have to be lab based, there's field work, meta analysis, um, teaching, there's all kinds of different ones you can choose. Lab is the one that most people want to do because it means that you can get hands on with research that is your own research. So I'm using MinIron which is like a new sequencing technology and it's enabled me to kind of learn some skills that I wouldn't necessarily have learned in the lab you can't teach and I mean, quite an expensive kit to you so you can't teach that to a class of a couple of hundred students so this has allowed me to have something really personal to myself that's my own research so I was in the lab a couple of days a week for a couple of months and then now I'm just in the final stages of writing up my dissertation to submit. Great um, and so just uh, very briefly um, during your studies, obviously the assessments are the um, main way that we um, judge your progress. Did you want to briefly talk about the range of assessments or kind of anything that uh, you'd like to share about the assessments that you've had during your time at the School of Life Sciences? So in first year, it's a lot of kind of multiple choice exams, whether that's kind of throughout the course being online or at the end, uh, most of them are multiple choice, which is a really nice way to introduce you to university level exams because I felt I remember at the kind of first semester first year I was like well I'm never going to be able to write mm. an essay or a short answer question about this in enough detail to be able to get any marks I just don't know it yet but then you've got the multiple choice that's just kind of a nice level for where you're at but then by the time I'm finding now in second year I know enough that actually I don't want to be restricted to mm -hmm. figuring out which multiple choice answer is the correct one I want to be able to to fully write about it because I know a lot more detail um, and so it's a nice kind of broadening that allows you to just kind of prove what you do know because it's a gradual process but you get there. Great. Yeah so uh, like Caitlin said first first semester generally first year is all pretty much um, multiple choice and then as year goes on and going into second and third year it changes so I'm now at the point where most of my uh, module examinations are um, essay exam questions whether it be one or two essays or four essays in some cases which is absolutely fine because you're taught how to answer these questions and you don't actually realise how much knowledge you have until you get in the exam room and you can write out a four or five page essay mm -hmm. and it comes with quite e quite a lot of ease. Um, yeah, we have um, in maths as well, you have workshops which go towards your grades too and in some modules you do just have coursework so it is a real, it's really varied in what we have on offer. Yeah, I agree with like coursework and stuff. I think the university is quite good at um, providing us with like a variety of tasks to do, if that makes sense. It's not just necessarily restricted to report writing or essay writing. Um, I feel as though in second year this year I've been doing lots of different stuff in regards to my coursework, which is quite refreshing and it keeps you, it's sort of something that you would do more in a career environment, in a work environment, I suppose, not just for your academic skills. So it's, yeah, it's really good that they come up with different types of assessment. Uh, yeah, so on that topic, uh, through your assessments and studies, what kind of skills do you think you've picked up that, you know, aren't to do with knowledge, but actually to do transferable skills that might help you in the workplace after you've graduated? Because of the variety of modules that you do, there's always going to have to be some juggling done. And so it really prepares you for being able to organise yourself and your time really well so that you know that you've got a deadline this week and then another one next week. So you've got to plan your time well enough to be able to get them all done uh, and then especially with some of the poster tasks that are quite common you really get used to working together in a group 
um, and being able to identify what you're good at and not so good at mm. and kind of see that in others too so that you can work together and figure out actually you're quite artistic you're better doing this part whereas I'll do some more of the research um, and the detail oriented stuff because you're able to use each person's strengths to create a really good overall product but do it together. Mm. So I find especially in third year in our essential skill module um, we're given a real variety of different coursework so I wrote a post note which was something that's aimed towards government writing which I never thought I'd ever have to write but I actually found that I was really interested in it so I feel like it just opened up to show you other things that you don't necessarily think that science is part of and it gives you uh, the ability as well to be really critical so not only of your own work but other work and, and throughout all the modules I've found that there's been lots of coursework that have been aimed at like peer review and criticising other people's work which you might not always think about. It might be like a really, really good report but actually there will be things that are wrong with it and by the end of your third year you will be able to identify and analyse which bits are good and which bits aren't good and it, you can give your own opinion in a really structured and formed way. Great. Um, I think it's really good this year because the university has emphasised a lot on like clear and data analysis and data handling. This is done through coding, using R and stuff. This is something I've never done before. So this is a very useful skill I'm learning. And what I've, when looking into applying for jobs and stuff, this is definitely a skill that employers really want and they really need in their workplace. So it's very much an important skill that we need to at the moment. And I think that's quite essential. Great. So during your studies, obviously, there's going to be challenges, um, you know, like we were hearing about juggling different deadlines, um, things that come up in your own personal life, etc. So uh, obviously, the school is really interested in supporting students and uh, just wanted to get your uh, opinion on what kind of student support you feel there uh, there is for things like mental health, finance, study troubles, settling in, making friends. You know any of these things that come up obviously we touched on it at the start have you have you how have you felt the university and the school support support students in that i felt that there's a lot of support there from a lot of different places it could be that you go to your academic advisor as your first port of call and kind of say you know what it's all getting a bit too much i'm just a bit stressed at the minute and yeah sometimes that's all you need that 10 minutes to just kind of vent and get it all off your chest and then the world seems like a better place again you know you're a lot calmer um, but then if there's something that's a bit more serious that you need a bit more help with, your academic advisor will point you in the right direction or if you don't even feel like you want to speak to them. I've gone and spoken to my programme director plenty of times um, because everybody's really approachable. It's never been kind of a, oh, well, they're the programme director, they're much too important to be speaking to me. Um, everyone always has time for you and will always be willing to help you if you need it. Right. Yeah, so um, I found that throughout the whole three years, there's always different people you can talk to. And if you don't necessarily want to speak to someone that's off your course, if you don't feel like you have that connection, you can go to your accommodation. We have um, resident advisors who come round and they, they, you have their numbers and you can speak to them on a bit more personal level. Or you can go and use a mental health service. Or there are different people that are situated around the... Um, campus that you can go and speak to so with the finance department you can go over to them and if you're having money troubles they have bursaries that you can have access to and there's there's no stigma attached to anything that whenever you want to speak to anyone mm -hmm. it's really personal and you're always made to feel really welcome at, um, whoever you go and speak to okay yeah and um, personally i haven't really experienced like the university-wide um, networks or anything but for the school of life sciences itself um the staff are really good if you have any issues um, they're very much all ears. They have your best interests at heart and they do sort out your problems. If that's just academic stuff or day-to-day -day life stuff, they will help you sort it out. And I've experienced that and I think they're very good at it. Great. Well, obviously, just moving to the last segment, uh, you, uh, are here, you, you're, you're at Liverpool, you're at the school uh, to get your degree, but to prepare you afterwards, for, after graduation. Um, so have you guys considered... Uh, study abroad opportunities, work placement opportunities, internships, um, or any other types of experiences that might help you stand out? So for me at the moment, a big thing has been the summer placements at, in the summer between second and third year, um, which gives you an opportunity within the School of Life Sciences to, if there's a particular lecturer whose content you've really enjoyed, go and speak to them and say, have you got any opportunities over the summer for me to come and get some experience mm. in your lab? 
um, which is a really nice way of easing you in because it's somebody that you've kind of got some experience with um, and it's really hands-on seeing cutting-edge research that you wouldn't necessarily have the opportunity to get involved in otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I actually did a summer placement between second and third year for two months, so I did it in July and August last year and I was funded by Wellcome Trust, so there are scholarships available for people that can't necessarily stop and in summer without working. So it meant that I could still have money coming in and I was getting recognised for the work that I was doing. And it gives you an opportunity to see what actual research is really like because part of the things that I was looking at, there's potential for it to get put into a paper. So it gives you your first insight into how like the real world works with research and how it can help others too. Mm. Um, I didn't personally look at abroad and internships but I have friends that have had um, experience with it and they said that it's just set them up and given them that little bit of an extra push uh, for what they want to do and it's something that great that looks really good on your CV mm -hmm. because it shows that you're standing out compared to other people that might not have had that experience. Yeah I haven't done study abroad but I've heard of those people that have done it and they've loved it and it's been a great experience and it's a it's really good that they do offer that in the university and I think it is something that makes you stand out that you've had that um, different experiences and seeing different cultures or whatever. Um, so I think that's a good thing. And then probably the employability service on the whole of the university and life sciences is really good. They're really good at getting you focused and making sure that you focus on where you want to go after the degree. So at the end of the day, it's essential that we know where we're going and we have an idea um, to keep us focused and motivated. And I think um, there's like a careers employability week in life sciences as well, which um, stops all teaching and gets us interacting with different employers and networking and stuff. Um, yeah, so that's they're all very good. Great. So for you, just for you uh, and your your journeys, um, have any of you thought about what the next steps are? Um, for example, can you go on to study medicine, vets, dentistry from life science programs? Are you thinking about the masters? Do you know about the integrated masters um, or are you looking to um, find uh, a job outside of science or in a different area? Any any kind of thoughts about next steps and what opportunities you know about from the school? So I'm actually on the integrated masters course, which I quite like because it's really easy with funding. Um, there's no, it's counts as your undergrad funding, so there's no stress about having to apply um, or try and find the funding from elsewhere. And it's got the opportunities to do placements in industry um, and kind of broaden your horizons even more. It's not just the same as sitting in lectures like you would do in your undergrad. There is a bit more flexibility and a bit more kind of personal experience available for that so I'm quite looking forward to that um, but also I feel like there's a lot of different careers that you might not expect introduced to you so I had never even heard of a patent attorney before I came to university but kind of intellectual property and that kind of thing is something that looking into it a little bit more I find quite interesting and so I'm considering getting some work experience in that um, which isn't necessarily the first thought of being in science but it requires a lot of the knowledge that you kind of are introduced to, but applying your critical thinking in a completely different sphere. Great. So at the end of my degree, um, I kind of, I'm now having to get onto my next steps of what I wanted to do. So um, I'm initially looking for PhDs mm. um, across, I'm taking a year out though first, um, I'm trying to get some more experience. Uh, but just in microbiology alone, because it's quite a small group, uh, we have people that are doing the integrated masters. We've had um, students going to dentistry. There's a girl. There's a girl in my year that's gone into veterinary and meds, and there's another girl that's gone into medicine. So mm. actually, there's so many different opportunities that you can go into, and you don't think that just because you've done one degree doesn't mean that you can't go and do another one. And a lot of people, it is a gateway into doing the career that they want to choose. Um, but also at the university, they have the masters um, in research, so it gives you that experience doing research for yourself and getting experience in um, a working lab. But you're still getting uh, educated as well, part of it, doing um, modules or coursework assignments and writing up what you're doing, so that you've got documentation to show um, future, I don't know, employers that you do have the abilities because it's all written down. Mhm. Mm Great. 
Um, so originally my plan was to jump straight into the workplace after graduating. That was my um, hopes. But at the moment, my um, summer placements unfortunately have been cancelled due to the current um, situation. Um, but what are you going to do? Um, so I don't know if that's something that's not as um, plausible at the moment. So I'm looking now on moving and changing into the integrated masters just so I can get some more experience technically before I um, try and go out into the workplace. Um, so that would be something that would be quite easy for me to apply for through the university and that would be a great experience I think. So that's more likely what I'm going to do now. Um, but this is it, it's very flexible and you can change your mind in regards to these things all the time and there's no stigma or anything blocking you to do that so that's great um in regards to like going on and doing veterinary or medicine i've got lots of friends that do biomed or biomed and um essentially it's not like a guaranteed spot that you can go on and go fly through the application process the application process will still be the same as say you've just done your a-levels or whatever um but technically you've got a, like a greater breadth of knowledge now towards that subject and when you go to interviews and stuff you'll be able to answer the questions much more confidently and show that you're actually very passionate about um that's that's what you want to do because it's, it's an extra three years of thinking about it and you're obviously quite determined to go into that field so i think it's um in the application process, you will stand out now that you've got a degree in that um, field. Great. Um, well, uh, thank you for uh, answering all those questions. You've really covered from the very start arriving um, and uh, kind of how the studies work, how you get supported and what your plans are for the future. Um, so thank you all.